Hi, my name is Greg Grubbs. I'm the product manager in the big data division of SyncSort. Uh, I'm going to show today a little bit about using SyncSort's DMXH with Cloudera Navigator. Uh, so we can look at some of the uh, lineage and show some of the searching and filtering capabilities we get with it. SyncSort DMXH is a means to do both ETL and more general in-cluster data processing uh, on Hadoop. SyncSort's DMXH assists in collecting, preparing, blending, transforming, and distributing data, both structured and semi-structured, on and off the cluster. And those sources that are used may be mainframe, uh, traditional EDW uh, data warehouse uh, types of data, or many, many other types of semi-structured data uh, that will come from various sources like web logs, uh, devices, and the Internet of Things, uh, and so forth. So to get started, I have a Cloudera cluster running uh, with the uh, enterprise license and uh, Cloudera Manager and Navigator installed. And we're taking a look at uh, Cloudera Manager right now just to see the services uh, that are on the cluster. One of the things that we can check is what software is installed. So we've got uh, installed via Cloudera Parcels, CDH5 itself, as well as SyncSort's DM Express. This is uh, also known as DMXH uh, on Hadoop. And it's distributed and activated, so I know that we're, uh, we're ready to use the SyncSort DMXH jobs on this cluster. We see here a DMXH job that does a large join. A large join being defined as both sides of the join are too large to handle on any one node. So it must be done as a MapReduce job. If you're familiar with large side joins in MapReduce, you know that the join has to happen in the reducers after the mappers tag the sides of the joins and send, send them to the appropriate reducers with the correct partition key. The DMXH designer doesn't have to worry about any of that. They simply define a join and intelligent execution will do the right thing when the job is submitted to decompose it into a MapReduce framework if it's being, if it's being asked to uh, run on a cluster. Now, in this case, after the join of the orders and the line item together, we'll end up with a file that has, basically it's a denormalized order. A uh, very, very large uh, file potentially with, uh, with all of the line items for each of the, uh, the orders. Uh, then we're going to create another file that's uh, more of a summary, uh, a type of reporting on that uh, in this aggregation. So we'll end up with both files. And uh, let's see how this runs in MapReduce. What I need to do is make sure that I'm connected to the right server that I want. So this is my CDH5 gateway, my gateway to my Cloudera CDH5 cluster. So I know that that's correct. And I'll just go click the Run button here. I could also start this from the command shell, of course. But in this case, I'm running from the GUI and choosing to run on the cluster. I'll click OK here, and it will start running. Uh, we can take a quick look at the job submission log as it's running and just make sure we get this message that the conversion to Hadoop MapReduce cluster flow succeeded. This is intelligent execution telling us that, in fact, this job was able to be run as a MapReduce job. So as that starts to run, you'll see what you see when you run any MapReduce job on the cluster uh, as the mappers and reducers uh, start. So we'll give that uh, a few moments to uh, complete and come back. And after we gave it time to run, we see that uh, it came back successful. And so we will be able to look at the full lineage of the history of the files once we move to Navigator. So here in Cloudera Navigator, I will log in. And let's just go to the search 
detail page. And I'm looking for things that are DMXH jobs. So sure enough, when I type DMXH, our jobs are all tagged with both DMXH and sync sort and potentially other metadata that you might have associated with your DMXH jobs and tasks. And all of that becomes instantly searchable through hundreds or thousands of jobs that might be running, uh, files that are stored in, in history and so forth. Um, what I'm really interested in looking at is my large join. So let's look for large in here also. So this is our run. And what we'll see, uh, this might take a little bit uh, of getting used to, but at, we actually had two sections to our job. Even though it was pretty simple, there was a MapReduce to do the join and another MapReduce job done to do the aggregation. And so the, the job that we call file join large, this is a DMXH name of it, uh, actually produced this line item order directory, which was then used as input back into the second phase of that. Uh, producing a, a eventually line item order summary. So that's the overall file lineage that can be easily uh, searched and displayed in Cloudera Navigator, uh, along with other types of jobs. And if we clear the search out, we'll see uh, other source types. Uh, everything that gets persisted to HDFS, deleted from HDFS, moved, renamed, uh, things that are uh, run on Hive or Pig or Yarn, as well as DMXH jobs uh, in MapReduce and then, uh, as we'll soon be doing, also in Spark. So all of those uh, can be uh, instantly accessed and, and very quickly searched. Our next steps with our Navigator integration is to add additional metadata typically used in DMXH jobs and tasks as well as field level lineage data that can be supported by the, the new Cloudera Navigator APIs. And we're working closely with Cloudera to uh, make that the best possible type of uh, integration for lineage and to assist with metadata governance that's required by many industries.